Okay, so now we have a way to enter the player name and display it. Since your game and my game might not have the same amount of attributes, we're going to create a for loop that'll work for both of us. So let's go for basic syntax for for loop. So we're going to do an int. I always use CNT. It just stands for counter. You can use whatever you want. I started at zero. But I want to make sure that it's always less than enum. Uh, okay, I'm going to add the system class up here for our enum class again. It just saves a little bit of typing because I'm going to be using the enum class quite a bit in this one. So enum dot get values. Remember the type of. And whatever you use to name your attributes. Mine was attribute names. Or attribute name singular. And you'll want to get its length. And then increase your counter. Now the first thing we're going to display is the attribute name. For that we're just going to use the GUI label. So we'll go GUI dot label. We'll want a new rect. And what we're going to display. So let's position it first. We're going to want to move it in 10. We're going to move it down. We've already gone down 10 and 25, so that's 35. Let's go down 40. We'll make it 100 wide and 25 high. Now, what do we want to display? Since all we want is the attribute name, we can simply use CNT, which is our counter, and typecast it as the attribute name. And we'll also want to enclose that in parentheses and convert it to a string. Uh, we didn't need that. There we go. So what this does is it takes this integer value, which is our counter. It's going to start at zero. And if we look at our attributes enumeration, we went over in a previous video how how this is set up, where the first one is equal to zero, then one, two, three, and, and onwards, depending how many you have. So instead of just returning the number that our counter is at, it's actually going to give us the name that corresponds with that number. And then print it out as a string. So let's take a look at that. Now they're all going to be bunched up on one line because we're just putting them all on one line. But as you can see, we're not getting numbers. So let's have them position one line after the other. We're going to want to adjust the Y placement of it. And we can just simply add to it. We're going to use our counter, whatever its value is, and multiply it by the line height, which we're using as 25 right now. Now this is a little messy. We really should write a cleaner algorithm to have it print out better for us. But before I get into anything that might look a little complex to anyone, I wanted you to see a very simple basic form of it. So let's test this out. And there we go. You can actually push them in a little bit more towards each other so it doesn't take up so much room. But we'll leave it like that for now. So now let's go ahead and print out the actual value of our attributes. We're going to be using a GUI label for that as well. So I'm just going to copy the one we did previously. Okay, so we'll want to adjust its position. It's going to be to the right of the of the name. So we'll want to move it in a bit. So we've already gone in 10 and 100. So it's 110. We'll want to have a 5 pixel padding. So we'll just do 115. We still want it to be moved down the same amount. It won't need to be as wide. I'm just going to make it 20. Oh, let's do 25 for now. Actually, let's do 30. That allows 10 pixels for each 
uh, character. And what we're going to display is completely different. So to get the value of our attribute, what we're going to want to call is tune dot get attribute or primary attribute dot adjusted base value, I believe it was. Oh, we'll need to say what attribute we want. And since we're just expecting an integer, we can just use our counter. And then adjusted base value. And it's going to be returning an integer, so we'll want to type cast this to a string as well. Now let's save that and take a look. No errors, print, or run, sorry. And you'll notice it's all zeros, which is what we expected. So since we have this working now, to make things a little bit cleaner in our ongui function, I'm going to make a couple other functions that we call from ongui to display stuff. So I'm going to start off with the private void. I'm just going to call it display name. I like to simply come up here, grab that, cut it, place it in here. And then call the function. And the same thing for here. We're going to make another function called private void display attributes, or whatever you want to call it. Cut that out, put it there, and then just simply call it. It can get quite messy if you actually try to keep all this code in your ongui. And it's just a little bit easier to see what's going on. So when you look at your ongui, you can go, oh, look, I'm going to display the name, display the attributes. I'm going to be displaying vitals next. So private void display vitals. private void display skills and I'll come up here and call those functions now that's a much cleaner on GUI function and it should still work just like before. So let's move on to our vitals. Now for displaying our vitals, it's the exact same way we're going to be doing the attributes. So we're just going to cut and paste that, drop it into vitals. Uh, the, this line will be the exact same except instead of grabbing a tribute name, we'll want vital name. Then for displaying the vital name, we'll want to change this. And instead of getting the primary attribute, we'll want to get the vital. And the index of that. And we'll also want to adjust where it starts off at. Now when we create our algorithm to, to change how this is going to be displayed. It'll be a little bit cleaner. Right now we're going to have to keep counting. Uh, for me I have seven vitals so I know this is already going to be seven. So I'm going to say CNT plus seven and do the same down here. And let's take a look to see if that worked. We have an error. So tune, get vitals, adjusted base value. I put int in there. It should be CNT. And the errors are gone. So let's take a look. So now we have our health, energy, and mana. 